So that's a quick spin of some of the new functionality that's out there, some of the notes that are relevant to that. Again, there is that one specific pricing performance uh, set of patches that is strongly encouraged that you take a look at. The next thing we'll do is now look at some of the setups that can be done. Again, here we're talking strictly about profile options and the like, not necessarily restructuring your prices and modifiers. From a profile option standpoint, first and foremost, it's very important that both the order management and pricing debug profile options be turned off, especially the QP debug profile option. If that's set to on, any pricing call that's made uses a lot of data. It stores a lot of temporary data, stores a lot of log data that can just bog down further queries. So in particular, if, for example, you're running order import, it's vital that the user that is running that order import not have QP debug set to on. In addition, it's important that you not make the attribute mapping engine do any more work that it needs to. So the recommendation there is to set the profile option that controls the build attribute mapping to only map those active attributes that are used within a pricing setup. A third recommendation is to deactivate pricing at scheduling. Nine times out of ten, that's not necessary to do, and although it's a function that's available, it's often left at the default setting for the profile option, so make sure you take a look at that and make sure that it is set to no. As you know, the pricing engine can price a lot of different things, and it has a lot of different points at which it can execute pricing, and those are all controlled through the pricing event phases. Now, this isn't a huge performance improvement, but in the spirit of eliminating any possible work that the engine has to do, the recommendation is to look at those pricing event phases and disable any that are not applicable to your specific environment. And finally, there is a purge capability to clear out any temporary pricing data uh, that may be lagging from other debug uh, exercises or whatnot. So it's recommended that on a periodic basis that that purge be run. There are many PL SQL p packages that are used as part of the pricing engine. A lot of them are seeded with the application. This list here is a set that's recommended to keep in memory, and, and the term database uh, administrators use is pinning. So these are permanently memory resident. Again, it's just one less thing that the database and engine has to do to execute a pricing call. In addition to the listed predefined or pre-delivered pricing packages, if you have any custom mapping packages, in particular, if you have a lot of custom attributes that you've defined, those packages that do the mapping for those attributes should be pinned into memory. So that's it from the setup side. We'll now look at a couple of tools that are available, some of these that you are familiar with, uh, and that'll be our next topic. The primary tool that we'll talk about in this section is the queries that can be run that give you some analytics on your pricing setup. Uh, the 11.5.10 version introduced a pricing performance analysis concurrent request that gave you some simple metrics on database sizing, uh, counts of use by the different pricing entities, be they price lists or modifiers, and if they're modifiers, if you have discount lists, surcharge lists, etc. Gave some analysis of what are termed non-selective qualifiers, so these are qualifiers that really even though they do enforce rules that you are required to implement, don't really provide a lot of selectivity when it comes to weeding out things that you shouldn't be using. Uh, tells you how many times you use, for example, the not equal conditions, how many times you use the all items uh, product capability. And the other big benefit is that the end of this listing is a set of all the indexes that are currently defined. So this is a quick way to ascertain if you are missing anything that some of the recommended uh, performance improvements uh, define. As I said, this capability was introduced with 11.5.10. Uh, there are new updated versions of this performance analysis that are available for release 12 uh, and 12.0.6. Uh, listed here are the notes that talk about these, these data collection queries, and it's recommended that you take a look at those um, before you run these. Those of you who have ever logged a service request with Oracle about advanced pricing, one of the very first things that we, you will be asked to do is to upload the output of this concurrent request. So it's, it's a good idea that uh, your administrators or your business analysts, those who would actually do the uh, debugging and research on advanced pricing problems, be familiar with this request and how to run it. So now we'll get to the meat and potatoes of this presentation, talk about 
some specific performance targets. Now what we've done up to now is look at things that can be done through standard setups, making sure we have the latest patches, making sure we're taking advantage of uh, the latest functionality that's available. Now we'll start looking at some ways to address your specific setup of price lists and modifiers, how you use attributes, etc. things you might consider to improve performance. So again, the first thing we'll do is just make a quick review of, again, what the pricing engine done, does and how it works and why those specific targets that we talk about uh, are applicable. So again, recalling the steps that happen, the very first thing it needs to do is determine a list price. So it needs a price list or it needs to find one. It'll then go through the adjustment process starting with a specific line, looking at adjustments across one or more lines through the all lines adjustments piece, and finally applying any header level adjustments and ending with the charges. Again, the points we talked about earlier that are necessary to remember, for every pricing line that is called, every line that is passed to the engine, every pricing and qualifying attribute will be evaluated for that line. The next thing that happens is that the price list lines are selected using the dates, statuses, product attributes, etc. At that point, lines are eliminated based on the qualifiers that exist either at the line or header level and then finally the incompatibility rules are applied and these are the areas that we'll attack specifically when we're looking at performance improvement